here's the lobby at my bet and the storm poker tables are found here All right so you click storm poker we're going to be playing the nl20 variant uh, nl20 stakes and as you can see here it's a turbo table that means there's not a lot of time to think it's six max play at you got a couple lightning bolts and tornadoes and no idea what <laughs> that's pretty fitting as you guys will see here soon enough the average pot size of the entire pool of players at currently 123 players in the entire pool is right at three bucks so the average pot we're gonna see is right about three bucks right now and players per flop at 14 percent right which yeah it's not necessarily speaking for very very loose play right um, there's only six players so yeah that's that's relatively relatively light that means these guys are playing a bit tighter range in general um, you know they're well let's say it like this uh, fewer players are getting to the flop you're not seeing a lot of three-way three-way flops is what basically this number is telling you uh, which is not necessarily in your interest I mean the uh, the higher this number is players per flop the the better it is for your your total return in the long run but look at this guys total hands per hour dealt right at 124 per table so once we get into our real sessions at you know four basically four cornering it running four storm tables maybe even up to six at one point um, yeah we'll be on any given table looking at 124 hands per hour whereas in your typical ring game you know you can expect I guess what 50 to 70 ish and yeah that's that's really the difference uh, one of the big benefits here at the storm poker tables and yeah in addition to uh, the speed and the fun of it all as you can see here, yeah, currency is U.S. dollars, um, speed hold'em, uh, no disconnect protection, uh, turbo, six-handed play, minimum buy-in is six bucks that we had just covered, right, in the theoretical section, uh, essentially 30 big blinds, and the maximum is 100, 100 big blinds for 20. Average stack size is 20 bucks. The highest is 80, so there's a guy that has, you can only buy in for 20, right, so this guy has basically increased his stack twice, he's doubled twice and yeah and or just kind of accumulated as he went but um, yeah that's how it is again average hands per hour at 126 the highest hands per hour rate was at 376 even right so that's I mean a lot of action on just one one single table and that being said guys I think you should also go over here to settings when you jump into the mybet.com lobby and I want you guys to um, go to table and definitely auto muck make sure that's clicked right you don't want to be showing your opponents your hands um, yeah remember table positioning you guys can fool with that as you like but definitely the auto auto muck needs to be checked the cards very important guys check the four color deck right I don't care who you are at one point if you're playing two color decks even though that is the actual live you know deck color um, you're gonna overlook something at one point for sure so just go ahead and make it four colors. There's no real difference if it's a little bit funky at first. If you're used to the two color decks, trust me, I was too. <laughs> um, it it's much better with four color deck. It's just um, easier on the eyes and reduces the yeah the number of potential unforced errors you can make. Uh, chat, we'll just leave it on. System, yeah, why not? What else do we have here? Audio, you can fool with. I you know I reduce it because I don't like these enormously loud peeps. And let's see here. And this auto top up for cash games this is very important this is what I have set and that means I'm gonna actively always buy back up to the table maximum all right because I'm playing a big stack strategy now I would recommend this for experienced players I would not recommend this for less experienced players because you don't know how much you're losing necessarily unless you are playing with um, again I, I use holder manager um, and I've got a graph that I'll show you guys at the end of the session, always up on the other screen, showing me exactly how many big blinds I'm up or down in any given session. So this can be really, uh, it's a good thing. You always want to be capped up uh, to the maximum if you are playing the big stack strategy. But if you're new to the game, don't click this because um, you want to know how much you're losing. <laughs> and if it auto caps you up when you're only kind of bleeding chips without showdowns, you don't really have a feeling for how much you might have already dropped. So I would say leave this unchecked for your first couple sessions and then check it, you know, and all basically manually then buy back up yourself as, as you move forward at, at the actual tables. 
All right, so with that, we are good to go. And I'll jump into this table here. We're gonna be number 115 or 119 of the total pool of players. So 79 suited to kick it off here in the small, raise it up as a steal versus again a mid stack player careful for the resteal pushes <laughs> and he lets one go but as you guys see here you know we got the speed fold and that's the big uh, the big benefit here at the storm tables ace jack from the hijack position raise up open 3x and kick maniac lets it go that's not a theoretical steal the steals start here at the cutoff steal raises all right, 87, I'm just gonna speed fold. If it's suited again, I might raise that up, right, according to my suited principle. Not that the suitedness is much better, but that I'll simply be playing that hand uh, one time in four instead of four times or three times in four. And they just give it to us. 57, again. Speculation here under the gun. You can raise that up, but these guys, a lot of these guys are going to play back at you, right? So, with my spec hand, sometimes under the gun, also suited aces, these kind of suited connectors, one gapper here in this case, I'll, I'll limp from time to time, also under the gun, so that I'm not getting into a bigger pot, right? I limp, and a lot of these guys, also at the low stakes, they also limp raise, right? So when an ace hits, you can also represent it. Um, because that's how a lot of these a lot of these guys actually think. They also they also limp their monsters, <laughs> which you know we we normally don't do. Um, you can from time to time, but just make sure you're changing it up. Yo, Ace Queen, bummer, no action. So the Ace Three is definitely a steal raise here, and if he had raised, I would have probably three bet. Uh, Restealed versus that, and again we're playing without stats, so we're playing, you know, for my experience online, you're a bit blind. I, I prefer having the stats there, knowing exactly what these guys are playing in different positions. You can really use that to your advantage. Um, but in, yeah, in this case, we don't have that, so we got to play, you know, general tendencies, stuff like that. Big pots, big hands. Um, small pots, small hands. We raise one up 4x this time with the Ace King. Changing it up a bit. And two folds, bummer, no action. So ace jack. And here we're playing, you have to, oh, you see the empty seats here, right? So we're playing four handed. So that does adjust um, or affect actually the ranges that you're playing. And the ace jack here, UTG and a re raise, I'm just going to let go. We're dominated too often with that hand. 68. Yeah, just waiting for our wave here. Good old speed fold. 10 jack, offsuit, maybe playable depending on what comes. Small stacker here, just folds it around. We take a shot versus a mid stacker. And we take it down uncontested with our steel raise. So ace nine again, weak ace in the big. Uh, we'll definitely re-raise versus the MP limper. And just pot it, giving this guy again two to one odds. And here, you know, we wake up with the backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, c bet it, get flatted. <laughs> yeah, it could be a check raise here, but again, that's that's a very typical float move so he flats the flats the flop bets the turn and now I check raise thinking that he's doing this as a float bluff and get called again and we're hoping that he's on a miss flush draw here and we bet that out to continue our aggression then into the river and he lets it go so again yeah we, we put him on probably if correctly you know float line that was a float bluff a lot of guys say, you know, they use floating exclusively as a bluff line. It's not necessarily a bluff line. I mean, it's it's also a bluff line, but you can you can use a, a float play, or yeah, the float betting line also when you have it, right? Yeah, you actually need to be doing both. So yeah, float is again, it's, it's a line of play. It's not exclusively a bluff. 
And a lot of people, a lot of guys out there really think that. I don't know why. They also think that c-betting is only a bluff somehow. It's, it's simply a positionally defined move. That's all. You can do it with aces, you can do it with flop sets, you can do it with absolute nonsense. It's yeah, just completely based on yeah, your line of play. So here we go, running <laughs> straight and flush draw again, and this time I'm not going to see bet it, I'm just going to peel one off and see what he does. So two checks, I opt for the delayed see bet here, pretty hefty, and delayed see bets are I've found you know, at the lower, lower levels much more effective than just see betting every single flop, so definitely add that to your arsenal guys. Um, when you're in position, especially on the button. Uh, low board, stuff like that. If you completely whiffed, you got over cards. Yeah, take the free card from time to time, why not? So, ace, queen, suited. Razor up. And take it down, uncontested. So, finally we pick up our aces, and I don't think I mentioned it actually in the theory. Damn, no action at all. Uh, you're only going to get aces about one time in 222 deals. So, yeah, hard luck. No no dice on that. Uh, no action. And 69 suited. Let's see what they do. Again, you guys are seeing all these little mid stackers here. And for this, you know, with these odds, um, you're basically three and a half to one. I'm going to go ahead and call that just for the miracle flop. And those are the ones, you know, that you can really, when you hit hard, they can pay off. Uh, you normally want to be doing that against bigger stack players. Now that I'm looking at this, I probably should just let that go. But for the min raise, you know, why not? So he checks behind, and now I just dunk into it on the turn. Represent maybe the queen, see if I can't buy this. A big dramatic pause. <laughs> and he flats. All right, so five, six, seven, nada. Uh, leads me to think that he's on, you know, the fishy kind of can't let go of flush draw. So we go ahead and pop that one last time, thinking that he missed. And take it down. Oh wow, we flop here the uh, trip aids, and that's just going to be a check. Let him bet, probably check call, and then we'll run the out of position donk move. <laughs> or we can just check raise right now, right? You and you guys want to also increase your check raising stuff like that, but this time we're going to check call it because there's nothing to protect against. And this time with the two hearts, I am going to go ahead and bet into it. Also, if he's on like you know Jack King stuff like that, we don't want to see another. For example, nine. <laughs> And here, although I, you know, I am going to go ahead and make a value bet here, half pot, and think we're good versus a lot of hands here. Any bear queen, stuff like that. Um, he does let it go and we take it down. Alright, twosies we just raise up as a steal. And we catch. Uh, re-raise. Mercy, mercy, mercy. We were having no dice here on the old music. Alright, 8 times 10 is 8 bucks, right? So I had it with the implied odds calling for set value. And no set, no bet. I'm just going to save that money because he probably had the king. And see what he does. He does bet it out half pot. I mean, you can also check raise it, for example, here. Uh, also with your set of 9s or 10s. Uh, check flat it, stuff like that. You can also just bet it out. This time we just, yeah, no set, no bet. We just play a textbook and... Um, hit or miss poker. King Queen under the gun, we raise that up. Open raise. And Fearless Felix. Was a little bit scared. <laughs> and fast decision makes a fast decision. And we take it down uncontested. And I'm glad just to see a cheap flop here, so I just checked that. Um, wow, flop the open in a straight draw. That's nice. Uh, it is too suited, so I don't want to see you know the the seven or the the queen of diamonds. But yeah, definitely want to semi bluff that. Don't have a made hand, but I have a decent draw. Was also limp pot and got a lot of fold equity. Anyways, we wake up with ace queen after having played a couple rounds in order to stay in the game. We'll make a re steal here, three exit, and we get a caller here from a mid stack player. And let's see what the initial razor does. He actually comes over the top. So again, so he two bets, I three bet. There's a flat. This guy four bets all in for well over 50 big blinds. And um, the ace queen is pretty much toast here, guys, uh, even when he calls. Uh, we wake up with kings here. 
and see if we get any action. <laughs> Probably fold it to us. <laughs> Come on, fearless Felix. I think we're gonna have to change his name for sure. Um, fearful, <laughs> timid. No idea. Alrighty, yeah, and we got no play here with our actual holding, and we'll soldier on. So what's going to happen in, in future videos is, you know, we're going to have um, two initially in the next video to kind of build up, and then um, then four tables rocking at the same time, and I'll be pausing the video. So basically, uh, pausing the video, coming back and forth, making the commentary as as the hands are interesting, and that's going to be pretty standard from here on out, guys. So with this, I think we're able to to really fly through these hands, uh, you know, explained. I think everything you need to know about position, everything you need to know in general about typical bed sizing, uh, general ranges as a, again, very, very broad recommendation for the 6-max game. Um, different red flags to watch out for at the small stakes. Again, always adhering to bankroll management as you guys have already seen in this session itself. Um, we'll just check one with the under the gun limper here, see what we flop. So top pair and the weak flush drawn. In this case, you know, with the six, here's a spade. You're, you're thinking of the six of the spade as more as a blocker, right? Because you really, you really don't want to see a um, another spade there. And yeah, we take it down with a pot bet there, or a half pot bet. Okay. So fours, we're gonna flat for set value, and we hit another monster. <laughs> so we pull a stop and go here. We flatten and dunk into it with the aces on board. And he lets it go uncontested. So I flatted one here in the, the big, and we're gonna float this on this low board. We actually catch one of our cards, but this move I would be making also when I don't hit the queen. So I raise that up. And actually he's he's small stacks, so I'm just gonna shove here. And maximal fold equity. And if he's on like ace king, ace jack, that kind of stuff, any under pairs under the queen, we got a lot of fold equity here. If he's on the six, you know, whatever. He calls us with the flush draw and misses. Really good for our return. The thing is, if we only flat that guy's right coming into the river, we don't one, we don't get paid off, and two, he's only gonna fold uh, after a check when we bet he misses his flush. So again, you know, playing on the turn is the way to get paid off in a lot of a lot of scenarios. sevens here under the gun razor I'm just gonna flat that and again you know the rule is nine times more or less but just to keep it simple just think ten so ten times the uh, seventy is seven bucks and he's got that in a bit so we're good for set mining and we haven't actually hit a set yet so in this entire session there it is you know top set um, he checks and I'm gonna check one behind even though it is a dangerous board now it's now we're full sevens full of fours and I can't believe he didn't see bet that. Um, so now I've got to take a shot, otherwise I'm not going to get paid off at all, and that's probably the end of the hand. Damn. Yeah, so we hit the set, but uh, yeah, I got shortchanged on it, so to say. And yeah, he got away with his checks, and unfortunately we didn't get paid out. Uh, and we pick up aces again here on the button. This guy limps, and we're going to make the same move you know, that we'd always make, basically three or four times the big blind plus one per limper to isolate on the button and this guy sees that as an isolation raise and re-raises and or he has a decent hand and two folds and now I'm not gonna just flat All right we're both big stacked I'm gonna raise that back up and probably take it down yeah bummer hmm. but I'm also okay with that result in the long run because I'm making money you know when he when he three bet folds Take it down uncontested. So we're on the uptick here, guys, and that's always nice after having some pretty, pretty tough runs there, not getting paid on the bigger hands, bigger flops, um, not catching any kind of uh, any kind of draw for our life. And yeah, this is this is part of the game, guys. So just be ready for it, and you know, play on. And as as you're playing more tables, you know, you're you're gonna have markedly more shots on goal. So you can also tighten up, you can, yeah, yeah, you got all kinds of different strategies at your disposal here, but, um, 
yeah, we are on the uptick right now, and we're hoping to be able to bring this session to a good positive close. And for those of you who are just checking in, as always, this is Dylan for MyBet.com at the Storm Poker Challenge, Riders of the Storm video series. And yeah, again, for all of those, uh, all of you out there who haven't seen the initial few videos, definitely do so, so that you have the theoretical background um, needed to really understand uh, the game here, what we're doing. A general overview of six max play if that game is new to you. So thirty three. Then we're gonna raise that up as a steal. We do get flatted, that's a good result. We want one more flat here, not a push. <laughs> He lets it go, looking for the three, no dice yet again. King flops, he checks, we see bet it in position. That's a good thing about raising up your mid pockets because you can represent that king, right, instead of just limping. Um, I find limps a lot more in early position with the small pockets. Um, in late position, you almost always want to just raise that up, open at least. Again, the reason for that is you can one, take down the blinds uncontested, good result successful steal raise and two you know when you when you hit your set it's a bigger pot if you do get called preflop and three you can represent any high boards if you do get flatted and the guy checks into you and you miss so everything going for you again in position play in position play in position play and be aggressive right when you're especially when you're when you're entering a pot in late position go ahead and raise it up in general in general Alright guys, so the 86 we're going to also raise up here as a steal from the cutoff. And we get a flat on the button so we're out of position here post flop. And this guy of course from the big can make, an, make a squeeze 3 bet, but he doesn't. We flop 2 pair, which is about 49 to 1 against given our holding non-paired cards, but I don't want to see, you know, it's really connected, two suited, very wet board. So I bet that out, and like that, like that turn card, um, and this time I've got to put a little bit more heat behind that bet. Mercy. All right, so he flats us again, and I'm, I'm going to make a value bet here, thinking we're still good. Um, still good versus all over pairs, ace eights, stuff like that, and it looks like we do get paid off. Curious. He had the seven queen. Uh, so he was playing mid pair, and yeah, that's a good result. Again, question on the river: Can he call you down with a worse hand? Answer in that case was definitely yes, and a big multiple yes. So yeah, that's all good, and we will play on. Again, on the uptick here, guys. Trying to end the session on a good positive note. So again, this is Dylan for MyBet.com, wishing you all the best, and definitely best of luck at your next storm table.